Hey guys, I brought you back out to the mountains today because I want to show you another cool way you can start a survival fire using a sandwich baggie. Now over the years I've shown you how you can use water to start a fire using things like bottles, light bulbs, saran wrap, and even your pee. But I wanted to focus on using a snack bag today because there's a good chance you'll have one of these if you ever get lost while you're camping or hiking. Now perhaps one of the most important things in starting a fire is your tinder, the type of tinder that you use. And we want to find something extremely dry and I'm going to be using some bark and I'm going to crush this up into a powder. Because contrary to my other videos would have you believe, using paper to light a fire is not very easy. What we're going to do is use these big rocks and smash that up into a little powder because the finer we can get this, the easier it'll light off with the rays of the sun. So after crushing this bark between rocks for a couple of minutes, you can see it's been reduced to a really fine dust, almost like a really fine sawdust. And the darker the wood color, the better because it's gonna absorb more heat. And now that we've got this stuff, we can move on to our final few preparations before we actually light it up. A nice flat piece of bark like this would be good for a base plate. And once we've got that in place, we can just transfer the dust over into it and form a little pile. And it's a good idea to have a backup because as the embers and coals start building, you're gonna to wanna to have some extra dust to sprinkle on there and build it up a little quicker. And I got my little buddy out here helping me today. He's gonna to be gathering some of the twigs that we're gonna use for our kindling. You can see the ground is covered with all kinds of little twigs and we want the thinnest ones possible because that's what we're gonna transfer our embers to once we get a flame going. Trees are a great resource for kindling as well because they've got these old dead branches that are super thin, super fine. Within a matter of seconds, you can get a whole handful of tinder that's just gonna be great for when a flame starts growing. Now the last thing that's going to be really helpful in building a tinder bundle is some kind of dead grass like this yellowish stuff down there. If you dig down underneath and pull it out, you can get enough of it to fold it over and build a nest. And our little sticks and twigs should nestle down nicely right inside of that. Alright guys, so I've been scavenging the forest for all the different materials that we'll need and we've got them laid out here in order. I'll be starting with this little tinder pile here. Once we ignite that with the sunlight, I've got a little bit coarser bark that I've ground up that we'll sprinkle over top. Once that's smoking pretty good, we've got some dead grass that I can form into a little nest or tinder bundle. And once that catches fire, we've got little tiny twigs that'll help sustain that flame. And then hopefully that'll be enough to catch these on fire. Once there's enough heat to ignite these things, our fire should be pretty well self-sufficient at that point. Now the trick to using a sandwich bag or a snack bag to starting a fire is first you gotta make sure it's empty, then you gotta fill it up with water. Now you're gonna to wanna to fill your bag up about half full of water and you can use water from a creek like I'm doing here or water from your bottle or in extreme emergencies, you could even use your urine. Now the first thing I wanna do is tilt your baggie to the side so it makes a diamond shape with one of the points facing down. Then we're gonna grab this top area here and we'll need to twist that to trap as much of the water inside as possible. Now the more you twist your baggie, the more you're gonna notice it starts to bulge out and form these curves, which starts to look like a liquid sphere, and that's exactly what we're going for. It is a very fine line though, because the more you twist, the closer the bag is to bursting, and then you're gonna lose it all. The goal is to try and get it as close to a liquid sphere as possible. When you got something that looks like that, you're good to go. So now we have a cool liquid lens and all of our tinder laid out. The next step is to invoke the power of the sun and see if we can get it all to ignite. All right, now this is the part where patience becomes a virtue, but really all you have to do is use this thing like a magnifying glass and try not to drip any water on your tinder as you do. You can see that starts smoking almost immediately. So as the white coals start getting exposed, it's a good idea to sprinkle some fresh new tinder on there. And we're just gonna keep repeating this process until we get a lot of smoke coming out of there. You can see how the sandwich bag acts very similar to a magnifying glass. When you pull it away, the focal point gets more intense, and as you bring it closer, it disperses the heat more evenly. Now there's enough of a gentle breeze today here that I don't have to blow on this at all. As this thing smolders, it sucks just enough oxygen out of the air to keep it going. All I have to do is keep supplying it with fresh new fuel. We could actually give this just a couple more minutes to generate even more heat, and that's a great opportunity to put together your tinder bundle. You can see how I've got the dead grass here intermixed with small branches. This thing spent some good time smoldering, so now what we're gonna do is press the tinder bundle up next to it and very carefully roll it over. And the cool thing about this setup is there's a lot of air flowing through this. So this thing can build up a lot faster now and it's got some really good material to build off of. Now let's gently wrap the grass around it to contain as much heat as possible. And on a windy day like this, it's not gonna take a whole lot for this thing to ignite. So our embers are successfully transferred into our tinder bundle and now all I have to do is give it a couple of minutes for the heat to build. And as it does, you're gonna start seeing a lot more smoke. 
You can see the smoke is definitely building in intensity. It's getting a lot thicker. So that's a good indication that it's ready to move on to the next phase. And if we blow into it gently, we can really accelerate the ignition. Oh, there it goes. We got a fire. All right, at this point, we need to get some new sticks on there as quickly as possible. Should have been a little more prepared for that. I got that on my first try, guys. See, a little patience pays off after all. Now, if your fire starts going out, but you've got a lot of smoke, all you have to do is blow on it like this. There we go. At this point, it should be pretty self-explanatory how to keep this fire going. If not, I'm afraid you're on your own. So there you have it guys, that's how to start a survival fire using nothing but a sandwich baggie and the resources you already have around you. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll be looking for you in the next one. Talk to you then.